Hi guys and welcome in Milieu Das Gaming in a new Conflict of Nations series and today we start a new series with the biggest, greatest nation, the Mother Russia with its capital Moscow. The long-awaited series after several votes on Discord and YouTube, my fans have chosen a solo gameplay with Russia. Because we all know the difficult position of this nation, yes it is so big and strong but yet it have a lot of borders with a lot of nations as you can see here in the game. We have borders with Finland, Belarus, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Mongolia and China and also the Koreans and Japan. It's a very difficult position that makes us surrounded by a lot of enemies. But today we are going to be up to this challenge and try to win this game in a solo gameplay without coalition, without nobody, we will work it alone and with a variety of strategies and of course I will explain everything step by step and second by second. I will try to be so specific in this nation in particular because it's going to be epic, it's going to be the best, it's going to be the most famous series in our YouTube channel with Russia. So like all my series and like all my videos we start with the army bases we need the motorized infantry at early stages in the game so here we are playing in normal map with four speed not apocalypse not overkill so we will have to wait for the days to pass too so we we can unlock uh, the troops of course uh, here we have the eastern doctrine the red star doctrine yes so we don't have stri strikers from day one so like the uh, european doctrine so here i am going to start with the motorized infantry in all of my cities well not all of my cities because i'm going to explain something which is so important to play with russia russia is so big and mobilizing troops and moving them from city to city is going to take ages so the first thing you will think about is planting a lot of air bases and airfields around your nation. And of course you will need to follow an adequate and the uh, easiest strategy that you can be adaptable with it, you understand? And the best strategy to use with uh, Russia is air force. Because you need fast deployment, you, don't, you cannot expect from where it's going to be the attack like when Mongolia will attack when Kazakhstan will attack and from where it will attack you cannot anticipate that because your land is so big and you have a lot of borders you can't close them all so here the solution to uh, fight this problem is to have a big air force I don't really recommend to play with helicopters because helicopters have not a big range, not a wide, a wide range. It's so small, so it's not going to be so useful. And also they are so uh, slow. So in to, to be able to prevent uh, your enemies from attacking you, you would need fast deployment, you understand? You need fast moving all around your map. Because here, look at, from Europe to Asia, all around the continent, it's so big, tremendous. So in this case, I really suggest we play with strike fighters, the Suhoi strike fighters. Also, the bombers are very useful because the bombers have big range, big attack range. So you can, from Moscow, you can attack even China, you understand? Because the bombers, they will be so useful with um, Russia. But me, personally, in this game, I will follow the strategy of the strike fighters. We will try to make a lot of strike fighters. I will try to make three cities they will make these strike fighters of course i'm not going to make a lot of air bases i'm going to specify three cities um and these three cities they are not going to be like those closed cities uh, near europe they need to be so far from each other such as we can say yekaterinburg or vladivostok or maybe um Novorysibirsk. so these cities are so far in the middle of the map so an air base there, it will be so useful for us. These close cities such as St. Petersburg, Voronezh and um, Rostov, they are so close to the European nations. So there we will build our land troops such as motorized infantry or the multiple rocket launchers or the main battle tanks or the uh, mobile anti-air. Later, uh, with the, the flow of the game, I will choose the strategy I'm going to follow but now 100% I'm going to follow the strike fighters but yet 
In this day, day one, I cannot unlock the strike fighter so quickly, but the Europeans can because in the European doctrine, they can unlock the strikers from day one. Look here guys, I'm going to show you something so funny. These are my fans and these are people who know me in my game. And there are a lot of people who know me here and seriously it's getting so dangerous because look at here. Guys, Milidas is here, Brazil is a conflict YouTuber and one of the best players. Thank you Iran, thank you so much. Uh, Milidas, please don't attack me, <laughs> France. If you start a video now and say today I will take France. Okay, today I will take France. Ah, no, I'm joking. Look what China said. What if we all attack him at once? Think about it, if we let him live he will win, but if we all attack from all sides he will lose. Oh, this is serious to be honest. What should I do in this case? Like, yes, they can do that. They can really team up and attack me from all sides because after all, they will beat me. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be very cool for them to beat one of the best players of the game, of course. So this changes all of my strategies to be honest because now I have a threat from the Asian side and also Kazakhstan and China are in the same coalition so this makes things more complicated you understand let me check if they are building something there they are still on the army bases China is still on the army base yes also arms industries so he is active this is going to be tough to be honest. Let's go to my provinces here and I will build some local industries. I will look for a supplies one. Yes, here in Cheetah we have a supplies province. I will build a local industry to boost up my supplies and components of course. I need them both. They are so important. I will look for other ones. I need to zoom in like this so I can see which provinces have resources. I don't know if there are more, but I will check. This is Arkhangelsk. Nothing, okay, no problem. So in this case, I need to wait. I need to be patient and I need to intercept who will attack first. I'm not going to jump the first, you understand? I need to wait who will attack me the first. In that case, I can intercept their attacks, you understand? But hopefully no one will attack me before I make some strikers at first. Here I started making the air bases in the city of Yekaterinburg, Moscow and Arkhangelsk in the far far north. The other cities of Voronezh, Nizhny Novgorod, um, Rostov, I will build the infantry there and also the mobile on tier. I will continue explaining the issue of the strikers. I said that from day one. Uh, uh, the European strikers are open from day one, so that poses a problem for me. In order to protect my infantry from this huge problem, I did the research of the mobile on tier, and now I'm starting to mobilize them in my cities. Like that, I will protect my infantry in case of an European assault and waiting for my strikers to be ready. Like that, everything would be. According to the plan, and of course, all my uh, all my troops, they will be well protected from air. You understand? That is going to be useful for sure. That's why I did the mobile on tiers so early in this game. This is my city of Vladivostok. Going to build the mobile on tier here. If I have resources, I don't have. I will buy some components from the market, hopefully, and always in the first days of the game, the market is really full of resources but it's not going to stay like that for a while you understand not for a while okay let's send my infantry to the capital i will fortify my capital and also i will try to fortify the city of volgogorod because now i'm still choosing who will be my opponent here belarus is, ex is spreading so fast there he's taking the baltic states and also now Ukraine is doing well, everyone is, in, is active around me and things are getting serious, minute by minute. I will try to stay in a defensive position for now to be able to close all the windows for, uh, from my enemies, okay?
I received a message from Finland and he asked for peace. So I don't think Finland will be a threat for now. I'm going to leave that front and protect it because I will need a lot of troops on my Asian side. Like that, I will need all my mobile antiers and infantries. I already now trying to seriously choose which nation I will attack first. Mongolia, Kazakhstan, China or I don't know. You see here China is spreading so fast, He's, he already took all of the North Korea, later he will go for the South Korea for sure. So yes, he is going bigger day by day. Maybe I start breaking one of his allies, Kazakhstan, yes. Maybe Ukraine, Belarus, I don't know yet. But as I said, I will stay in defensive position for now. And yes, build my strike fighters finally because they are the units that going to turn the tables for me and for my favor. That's so crucial and this is the strategy I'm going to follow in this game, the strike fighters. The Sohoi model, of course, it's so popular. So practically I'm going to start preparing myself for Kazakhstan. I'm going to start preparing myself on his borders, it's so crucial. As usual and as every time I speak about preparations for any war, we start always to overstack or stack our units on units of 10, you understand? That's so important because whenever you launch an attack you need to launch it heavily, not with uh, separated units, not with uh, low stacks, low numbers of stacks, it's not going to be so efficient and we will receive a lot of damage of course. So like this, with heavy units like this, tens and tens and tens, they will be so good and they will wipe out anything they encounter on their way. More and more motorized infantry is now. We are in day 5. So yes, now we can upgrade our infantry to level 2. Airbase level 2 is being built in here, Katerinburg. In Moscow started to make my strike fighters, boosting up my arms industries of course. We try to do everything simultaneously at the same time, uh, upgrading our infrastructures, uh, building our units and uh, armies of course. We don't need to lose any time here because it's going to be a fast game. Solo with Russia, we will expect a lot of attacks from all the sides, so like that we need to be well prepared with more units, more troops and advanced, of course, armies. Now I'm going to start putting my units on the borders with Kazakhstan, near the city of Aktober and Atyarao. I'm going to attack them from these two fronts with the help of my strike fighters. Of course, I'm going to wait for my motorized infantry to be level 2, like that I will be, yes, more advanced and stronger, and also I'm going to wait for my strike fighters to be done. Also, they will help me a lot, of course, with this campaign. Early at the game, Kazakhstan will only have uh, motorized infantry level 1, so they will be an easy fish for my strikers. Easy fish. So this is our huge nation, Russia. We are already preparing and now we go. This is our first war. We chose our first enemy. It's going to be Kazakhstan. And of course now we are going with our first war in this game and this series and I hope it goes very well. I hope it goes as planned and we don't lose anything in this process and everything goes as planned. I will put my strikers to be patrolling near the city of October, I will use it later, of course. Here I'm checking my cities and building more strike fighters in Yekaterinburg. The uh, army base level 2 is ready. Also in uh, Moscow and Arkhangelsk. From this day on to all the future dates, I will not stop making the strike fighters, okay? 3 after 3 after 3, non-stop. Because that's what will make me win this game and i hope i win it it's going to be so hard i know and you all know that it is going to be so hard but i trust that 
we can do it all together because in the comment section of course you will uh, give me some tips you will give me some advices so i can be able to win this solo game with russia you see here belarus is getting bigger so fast he is on my borders and he is going to be a hard target to be sure he already wiped out ukraine so fast and he is now the first of the table belarus i'm going to keep that stack of 10 seven infantries and three mo uh, mobile on tier i'm going to keep it in the capital moscow for i don't know because i'm expecting any time an attack from belarus or an attack from finland or uh, turkey or anyone from there because i have a lot of nations on my borders so that is going to be so hard but at least i can always save my capital i don't um i don't care if i lose other cities but the most important i will not lose my capital because it's going to reduce so much my morale and i'm going to struggle later with the consequences of that the consequences of losing a lot of resources production and everything okay the city of Aterau is down it is ours now also the city of Aktobi is under heavy assault of my Taut artillery and now going for it with my stack of 10 units my strike fighters are heavily assaulting the capital of Kazakhstan Nur Sultan and everything is going very well so far So this is the process of our first war, it's going so good, now I'm going to leave one infantry in the city of Aktobi and go straight to his capital with also my heavy stack. And send the Taut artillery to bombard the city of Osikimen all night. We have nothing to rush here, we played clean, we played so careful and with a lot of courtesy. This is my city of Rostov. I'm boosting up my arms industries. Strike fighters are being built in all of my three cities. This is my stack in Vladivostok. I'm going to add it another motorized infantry. So that city is going to be so important to control my Asian side because here I have China, Mongolia and uh, Japan and that stack I'm going to upgrade it and make it bigger and bigger because I'm going to expect a close attack on that city of uh, Vladivostok so I need to secure it and keep it always, always secured and safe of course. The capital is down city of Osikmen is down and now I'm heading to claim the last remaining homeland cities of Kazakhstan and everything is going so good with our first war because you know in playing with Russia the hardest thing in playing with Russia is the first 15 days if you survive your first 15 days no one would dare to stop you in the game no one believe me because the hardest thing to play with this nation is the first days. You cannot expect from where the first attack will come. You cannot expect who will attack you and when. So that's why I stayed put at the first of the game. I stayed in a defensive position to at least wait for the circumstances, wait for the scenarios, what will happen. When I saw that Belarus is so busy with Ukraine and he already engaged war with Ukraine, so yes, okay, good. Belarus is occupied with Ukraine. He will not think about attacking me. So like that and in that moment, I started focusing on China, uh, on sorry, on Asia. And of course, starting with the closest nation for me is Kazakhstan, because always the first, the first threat for Russia is Kazakhstan. Okay, you need to focus on every word I say, because all my words are tips and hints for you to help you in your future games to win with big nations, to win with hard nations, and of course, to pull off your um, solo wins. And of course, anyone who can win solo with Russia is a very, very good player. So yes, Kazakhstan is down and now I'm going for the level 2 strike fighters. Everything is going well and I'm so happy now because I know 
the hard, the hard thing here is to beat your first opponent, of course, in Conflict of Nation. After when your resources are boosted and you have a good air force and also you have good infantries with leveled up infantries, that means you are always advantageous. And of course now I have the biggest uh, economy in the game because it's Russia after all. And now after I conquered um, Kazakhstan, I have more boosted up um, resources. So that helps us to make anything we want. But here the normal maps are so uh, are a struggle with resources. I really like the Apocalypse because they have very beautiful resources. You understand? So here I'm building the mobile on TS, boosting up my uh, troops to level 2 and things and now we reach the end of our first part with Russia. See you in the next part. Bye bye